Hello, St. Peter's Broccoli. I hope you are well. For those who do not know me, my name is Ben Lindsay. I am founder and CEO of a charity called Power the Fight. We empower communities to end youth violence. I am also author of a book called We Need to Talk About Race, Understanding the Black Experience in White Majority Churches. But more importantly than any of that, I am South East London born and raised and uh, it's a real pleasure and privilege to be able to speak to you guys today from the word of God. I hope you guys are well. Um, You have just heard from the verses in the Old Testament from a book called 2 Chronicles 20 about a guy called King Jehoshaphat. And today's talk I'm entitling Choose Hope. I think in the context of COVID, the pandemic, racial injustice, uh, and multiple other things we have seen in the last year, how we choose hope, how we stay out of a dark, pessimistic place is really important. And I think it's really clear from these verses that God has something to say in how we are to approach really dark situations and circumstances, which for some of us, we have found ourselves in. Um, A little bit of history on on the verses that we've just read. Um, As I've said, it's about a guy called King Jehoshaphat. And in the previous chapter, he allies with, partners with um, another king. Jehoshaphat is king of Judah, but he he partners and allies with a guy called Ahab, who is king of Israel. And Ahab really wants to go to war against Ramath Gilead. So he gets um, Jehoshaphat involved. And Jehoshaphat is a bit nervous about this whole thing. He's like, I'm not sure. Um, Do you think this is a good idea? And and Ahab's like, yeah, you know, I've got like 400 prophets. And they're all saying it's a really good idea. And Jehoshaphat's a bit like, well, is there anybody who disagrees with you? And he says, yeah, this is one guy. But every time I, I talk to this guy, um, his name's Micaiah. Every time I talk to Micaiah, he always says something a bit negative. So I'm not sure. And Jehoshaphat wisely says, well, you know, let's hear what he says. And and Micaiah, the prophet, basically says, I don't think this is a good idea. In fact, if 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 you go, Ahab, you're gonna you're not coming back alive. This is this is a bad move. Um. Ahab and oddly Jehoshaphat ignore this. They go to war and then true to the word of God, um, Ahab dies in battle. And and then God is uh, rightly angry with Jehoshaphat. It's a bit like, listen, what are you doing? I, I kind of warned you if this wasn't a good idea. Um, but God in his mercy shows a lot of grace to Jehoshaphat. And off the back of that, Jehoshaphat learning his lesson um, appoints some wise counsels. And then we come to chapter 20 and what it says one of the key lines at the start of chapter 20 is this a great multitude is coming against you and what this verse means is that Jehoshaphat now is in a position where lots of people want to go to war against him the Moabites and the Amorites and this this uh these this verse here really spoke to me at the start of the year. I kind of stumbled upon these verses and where it says a great multitude is coming against you. I kind of was like, gosh, actually the last year it has felt maybe for many of us that a great multitude has come against us. Whether that is COVID-19 and everything that brings, the, the uncertainty and the fear, the, the pandemic, the fear of getting COVID. Some of you may have um, uh, got COVID or, or some of you may have known people who who got COVID or unfortunately has lost their lives, that fear of what's going on with our health. Um, uh, but also what COVID has brought, people may well have been furloughed or may have lost their jobs. Um, the concern, what's coming next, people's mental and emotional health being in isolation. There's been a rise in domestic violence. There's been a rise in youth violence. There's been lots of stuff which is off the back of the pandemic, which is happening locally and what's going on around us. Poverty levels have, have, have become really apparent, you know? And then there's, on top of that, there's this racial injustice situation which has been enhanced by the, the death of George Floyd. I don't know if it's like this for, for you, but definitely for me, 
it felt like a great multitude has come against me. And how do you operate in that? Well, I think, fortunately, these verses really does give us an opportunity to choose hope. I found these verses very, very welcoming at a time where I was like, gosh, there's a real risk of me being a pessimist in these situations, or, which I don't think is helpful, being like this giddy optimist. Everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be great. And I actually feel that God doesn't want us to be either. I think God wants us to choose hope. God wants us to be uh, clear where our foundations are in Jesus Christ. Doesn't want us to be down in the dumps, but also don't does not want us to have these unrealistic um, expectations of what the future will look like. It's more like just choose hope and make sure your foundations are in Jesus Christ. So I just want to, for the rest of my time, just take out six takeaways really from these verses um, about how we choose hope. So I'm just going to pray and then we'll, we'll get into it. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity, this privilege to, to speak to the St. Peter's uh, Broccoli family. Lord, I thank you for where you've positioned them and the incredible work that you are allowing them to do. I pray as we look at ways of how we choose hope um, in dark times and dark situations that, God, you you bring my words alive. Holy Spirit, flood me with your confidence and your boldness. Um, Lord, do an amazing work. I pray that these words are comforting um, and bring a security in a time when our circumstances are all over the place. Lord, we lift you up in your mighty name. Amen. Okay, so six ways that we are to choose hope in in these times what do these verses really teach us well number one um we choose hope by reminding ourselves of the the work that god has already done in our lives the blessings which he has poured out on us and i think this is really really tricky in times of darkness there's a temptation for us just to focus head down and be like oh my goodness lord where are you in this time which is a fine question to ask, but I think what we don't do well as a society is remind ourselves, it's almost like we've got short memories, we don't remind ourselves of the work God has already done in us and, and around us, the amazing blessings and grace that he, he has done in us. And um, Jehoshaphat realises this in 2 Chronicles 20 verse 7, he says this, he reminds himself of the blessings of God. Did you not? O oh God, drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people, Israel, and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend. Did he not do that? He's, he's reminding himself of the work that God has done for his descendants and for himself. I think that is a great way of choosing hope that in a time of darkness, can we remind ourselves of the incredible work that God has done with our friends, our families, with ourselves, the times when he's healed us, the times when he's answered prayer. Let us remind ourselves. That will give us confidence to know that actually in dark times, God has saved you um, previously. So that is number one. Choose hope by reminding yourselves uh, and reminding God of his blessings what he's done in your life. Number two, we choose hope by crying out to the Lord. Crying out to the Lord. 2 Chronicles 20 verse 9 says this, if disaster comes upon us, the sword, judgment or pestilence or famine, we will stand before this house and before you for your name is in this house and we will cry out to you in our affliction and you will hear and save. We choose hope by constantly and consistently crying out to the Lord about our situation. I think this is brilliant, but we are called to do that. Uh, we are not called to look left or right. We are called to focus on Jesus Christ and cry out. He's a God who hears us. He's not a distant God abstract God. He's one who wants us to rely upon him and to cry out. How often do we cry out to the Lord and wrestle with him within our circumstances? It's a way of choosing hope. It's a way of saying, do you know what? I'm trusting you with my circumstances and my situation. I'm going to cry out to you. And there's this like promise here where it says, cry out to you in our affliction and you will hear, you will save. 
there's a confidence that we have in that. Number three, how do we choose hope? Well, we choose hope by taking the correct and right counsel, the correct and right encouragement, the correct and right wisdom. Now, this is really interesting. I think in the last year, I've, I didn't realise there's so many experts, medical experts, when we start talking about the vaccine, I've heard so many conspiracy theories. My social media is full of people who have got the answer and are experts to every situation that you're you're in with like no qualifications. It's incredible. There's a real risk that we just take the wrong counsel. We take the wrong words. But here in 2 Chronicles 20, verse 14 and 15, it says this, and the spirit of the Lord came upon Jahazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Beniah, son of Jael, son of Mataniah, a Levite of the son of Asper in the midst of the assembly. So suddenly the spirit of the Lord, the wisdom have come on these other people, wise counsel. And then he said, listen, all Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid and do not be dismayed at this great horde for the battle is not yours, but God's. So this person now who has got wisdom and counsel is advising Jehoshaphat. And I, I think it's one of the questions we have to ask ourselves, who is advising us? Who has given us wise counsel in these dark times? Um, from my perspective as somebody who runs his own charity, I've got some brilliant trustees around me who in this last year have been absolutely fantastic and, and necessary for helping me make wise decisions about my charity. I've got people who are older than me, who, are, who have advised me on, on a personal level. And I've also got younger people as well who have given me maybe a perspective of what is going on on, on things which I don't necessarily understand or see. The question I've got for you, who is advising you? Who's giving you wise and godly counsel? Um, I think there's a risk of us making bad decisions when we, and it's, and I get it, it's tricky, particularly in isolation where we are at the moment with the pandemic. But what this teaches us, if we are going to choose hope, we are going to humble ourselves, actually. We are going to need to seek out wise counsel. There's always that, that saying, isn't there? If you look at your last five texts, whether that's on WhatsApp or on your, you know, your iMessage or whatever it is, that gives you an idea of who's speaking into your life. Who is speaking into your life? Are you getting wise counsel? So that's number three. Number four, we choose hope by standing firm. 2 Chronicles 20, 17 says this, you will not need to fight in this battle. Stand firm, hold your position and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. O Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid and do not be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them and the Lord will be with you. I think this is one of the, this, when I read these verses at the start of the year, I was like, oh my goodness, Lord, this is so good that the battle is not mine. The battle is yours. I don't have to fight. You will not need to fight this battle. Remember, great multitudes are coming to Jehoshaphat and God has said, you do not have to fight this battle. I'm going to fight on your behalf. What a saviour we have. And I think part of the reasons why we struggle is that we don't hand the battle over to God. We don't just say, Lord, this is your battle. Um, can you bring peace in the middle of the storm? I've, I've read this quote recently, which I think sums up this perfectly. Sometimes God calms the storm. Sometimes he lets the storm rage and he calms you. Let me read that again. That's like drop the mic moment. Sometimes God calms the storm. Sometimes he lets the storm rage and he calms you. Either way, the battle is not yours. This is the God who has the whole world in his hands. We are to remember that the battle is not ours and we hand it over to the Lord. You still with me? I need two more. We're almost done. We choose hope. The, the fifth way we choose hope is through worship, through giving praise, proclaiming his name to others. 
are we doing this even in this time? And I know this is really tricky when we're doing so much virtual church. And if you're anything like me, I'm missing being in community. I'm missing the opportunity for the prophetic, for people to lay hands, for people to speak into my life. I'm, I'm missing corporate worship. But we have to fight for this stuff. And Jehoshaphat knows this. Remember, the great multitudes are coming, but he says this in, in verse 18, 2 Chronicles 20, verse 18, he says this, then Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, reminds him of that Matt Redmond song, Face Down, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down before the Lord, worshipping the Lord. In a time of, of great multitudes coming, stress, uh, pain, uncertainty, they fell down before the Lord, worshipping the Lord. And it says in verse 19, and the Levites and the Kohathites and the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. But also, I wonder if there's also, uh, while that is important about worshipping, in these dark times, are we also remembering to praise his name publicly? Are we using these opportunities as a moment to speak into lives of people who may not know the hope we have in Jesus Christ? In verse 20, it says this, And they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And when they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God and you will be established. Believe his prophets and you will succeed. And when he had taken with him the people, he appointed those who were to sing to the Lord and praise him in holy attire as they went before the army and say, give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love endures forever. Who are you saying that to as a way of giving them the hope of Jesus Christ in these dark times? Jehoshaphat went out and shouted this out. He stood in front of people and said this. Are there people in your family? Are there people who are your neighbours, people you know, your friends, um, who need to hear the hope of the Lord? We are still, in these dark times, more than ever, his ambassadors. We are the ambassadors of Christ. The only way the message of Jesus Christ is going to get to our communities the hope of Jesus Christ is through our words and our actions. Are we doing that? And then finally, uh, number six, how do we choose hope? We choose hope by resting in him. We choose hope by resting in him. In verse 29, it says this, and the fear of God came on the kingdom of the countries when they heard that the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for his God gave him rest all round. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet. Remember, great multitudes are coming to Jehoshaphat, yet God said the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for he, for his God gave him rest all around. We choose hope by choosing to rest in him. We are really fortunate at Power to Fight that we've got a lot of business coaches who are who support us, give us advice on governance and organisation. And one of the things at the start of the year, one of our business coaches said to said to me was that every year they start the year by choosing a word which um, they hold on to all, all year. And you can imagine it's like business words like strive and succeed and all this type of stuff. And he said, they said to me, you know, just think of a word, think of a word that you're going to hold on to. And the word I chose after reading this was rest, you know, being busy and striving and, you know, being excellent and all this type of stuff is something we can all do. You know, we can, we can strive to work better and harder and faster and all this type of stuff. But if you're anything like me, actually resting, in him, resting in his word, resting in his grace, his mercy, is something which I, I struggle to do. And that's the word which I'm holding on to. Because I believe in this time of COVID and multiple other things, 
I need my realm to be quiet. Um, I need my God to give me rest all round. I think it's a beautiful thing. So to conclude, let's just go over what we've just said. You know, we choose hope by reminding ourselves of the blessings of, of, of God. We choose hope by crying out to the Lord in all circumstances. We we choose hope by taking the right counsel, encouragement and, and wisdom. We, we choose hope by standing firm in who God and Jesus is. We choose hope by continually worshipping and giving praise and proclaiming his name to others. And we, we choose hope by, by, by not striving, but resting in him, lying, laying down all our concerns to him and asking his spirit to, to give us peace so that our realm is quiet all, all year round. I suppose if there's an overarching uh, word for this is we are to trust Christ. The world is changing. Circumstances have, have changed the way we, we do life. But God's love and grace towards us remains consistent and hasn't changed. And we are to take the words of Psalm 46, Psalm 46 and to be still. I will leave you with this. Um, at the start of the year, my mum sent me, um, as she tends to do, send me ser- sermons for me to listen to. And um, she sent me a, a sermon from uh, Charles Spurgeon, which was originally done on January the 6th, 1867. And it was called Good Cheer for the New Year. And um, I'm just going to read... Um, a, a, a paragraph from, from what he said. It's a brilliant sermon. I'd, I'd encourage you to go and listen to it. But he says this, if you put these things together, intense affection, personal interests, unwearied power, and then if you remember that all this time, God's heart is actuated by unchanging purposes of grace towards you, Surely there will be enough to make you lose yourself in wonder, love and praise. You have sinned in the past of your history, but your sin has never made him love you less because he never looked upon you as you are personally considered nakedly and abstractly in yourself. But... He saw you and loved you in Christ in the eternal purpose, even when you were dead in trespasses and sins. He has seen you in Christ ever since, and he has never ceased to love you. My beloved, my brothers and sisters in Christ, in these dark times, understand that Jesus has never ceased to love you he died on that cross he was resurrected for our purposes for our glory for our salvation for our sanctification so we can be in relationship with our father in heaven he's never ceased to love you has not left you even in these dark moments of the multiple things which have happened over the last year or even the things which you have been living with and ongoing uh, trials and tribulations Understand that he has never ceased to love you. Choose hope. Choose hope. Choose hope. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to to speak to, to your children. Help us to always choose hope in everything that we do. God, help us to stand firm in 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 in, in your love and your grace. Let us let that be the foundations of our daily walk with you. Help us, Lord. We are we are weak. We are easily uh, confused. We are easily kind of turning to left and right, hearing things which are not wise. Lord, help us to put our focus right back on you. Help us to choose hope in your mighty name. Amen. God bless you, St. Peter's, and I'm sure I will see you soon.